next lecture recital is an exploration of unaccompanied trombone music, an area of trombone literature not so frequently experienced by non-trombonists. Pieces will progress mostly chronologically, starting with Baroque music, transcriptions for trombone, since the instrument was not yet conventionally used, and proceeding to traditional written for trombone pieces, an electronically accompanied piece including with some avant-garde music. With the selection of music included, I hope to portray the general types of literature available for the unaccompanied Without further ado, I will begin with a discussion about the early, trans early music transcriptions for solo trombone. Until relatively recently, literature for solo trombone has not been a focus for many composers. As such, soloists often have had to borrow from the repertories of other instruments to represent styles predating the mid-20th century. Some of the most popular trombone arrangements of unaccompanied solo trombone include Johann Sebastian Bach's Cello Suites and George Talamon's Flute Fantasy. Bach is most famous for his piano and organ compositions. Within those instrumental varieties, Bach frequently employed polyphony when two different melodies are performed simultaneously. This is a straightforward process when writing for ensembles or keyboards. Different hands or instruments can play different parts. But when writing solo literature for string and wind instruments, Bach turned to more unorthodox techniques. For instance, a cello can play two notes simultaneously so long as they're not adjacent strings or even more if the chord is broken, that is, if the notes are played across three or four strings in a single fast bow stroke. This allowed Bach to write polyphonically for cello by separating the lower and higher notes of chords in ways that imply individual parts, a technique called implied harmony, which is used throughout the prelude of the second suite. In other cases, chords were rewritten as arpeggios in order to achieve a similar effect. Conveniently, the cello covers the same clef and general range as the tenor trombone, therefore making an ideal instrument from which trombonists can steal literature. However, the trombone is more limited in its harmonic potential, as it can only buzz one solid pitch at a time. As such, trombone arrangements of cello works must rewrite the original double stops as successive notes. Another hurdle is the difference in sound production. String instruments can create continuous sound. By contrast, music written for trombone has to create opportunities for the player to breathe. The second sweet prelude makes this difficult, as it features almost two pages of mere constant eighth notes. As a result, wind performers must take certain liberties to facilitate breathing. In this performance, for example, you will notice that I speed up certain phrases so that I can reach an intermediary point to breathe. While this does result in short pauses, they are intentionally placed to avoid breaking up essential phrases. Another broke musician whose works are commonly arranged for trombonists is George Philip Telemann, specifically his fantasies for flute. Telemann had written three sets of twelve fantasies each for unaccompanied instruments. The other two are for violin and viola. The fantasies are written as character music. Each individual fantasy and movement within it has its own unique expressive mode. It seems strange that amongst all the music Talmon composed for various instruments, a flute piece is the one arranged for the trombone repertoire. Then again, since the flute is also a wind instrument, there are already distinct, distinct phrases to allow for breathing and all of the notes are already separated. However, there are other challenges unique to transcribing a high register instrument with keys to a low register instrument with a slide such as the tendency to leave large intervals like tense throughout the movements. Alan Rabe is responsible for the trombone transcription of the flute fantasies. For some reason, his transcription orders the fantasies differently than Talamon did. For example, the A major fantasy on today's program is Talamon's first, but Rabe places it fifth in the series. For the most part, the music in the transcriptions follows the original in terms of notes, intervals, and keys just transposed an octave below the original. However, Rafe transposed some fantasies to entirely different keys, likely to place it in a more accessible range for the trombone. The modification of Talmon's third fantasy from B minor to A minor is one such example. Rafe made other modifications as well, adding accents, slurs, and other dynamic indications. I encourage you to listen to recordings of each of these pieces performed on the original instruments to hear how it differs from the rendition you will hear tonight. For now, I hope you enjoy my performance. Oh. Mm -hmm. 
In addition, intonation can be challenging. The recording could have, created, could have been created according to a variety of different tuning pitches and falls entirely on the performer to match that as best as possible. Finally, expression in pieces of this nature tends to take a back seat. The most important aspects to focus on are timing and intonation. So while there is some wiggle room for dynamic expression, there is no tolerance for stretching notes or modifying timings in any way. Though technically challenging and perhaps a little unusual in its sound, I hope you enjoy this next piece, Mission Red by Michael Davis.
hurries in and delivers his message, and then Basta rushes away. Basta translates to an F in Italian. Overall, the piece evokes a feeling of stress and urgency, as I'm sure you will prefer. A great deal of avant-garde music makes use of extended techniques, that is, unorthodox or unusual ways of playing an instrument. Above me is a list of effects and extended techniques which occur in the music I am performing. It's not a comprehensive list of all the effects a trombone is capable of creating, but it does represent many of them, some of which you've already heard tonight, and others which will be heard in Basta and Improvisation. Multiphonics are a difficult technique which can be executed on most wind instruments. This is a technique where one note is buzzed on the instrument while the player simultaneously hums another note. The hummed or sung note can be spaced any interval from the fundamental tone being buzzed, even in unison, but they are often used to allow a monophonic instrument to play polyphonic lines so that multiple notes sound simultaneously. The notation for multiphonics, as you can see in this excerpt from Basta, is a small square note head above the instrument note. Theoretically, the sung note can be written below the fundamental, but it is very rare. Vocal range can be a potential challenge for performers attempting multiphonics. For example, women with a higher vocal range would likely have to take the written sung note of an octave. This is an example of what multiphonics sound like as the B-flat triad with the drum on the tonic.
For most instruments, trills are typically executed by rapidly lifting a finger or two in rapid alteration between two closely spaced pitches, but this obviously does not apply to the trombone. Most of the time, trills are between two half notes, two notes a half step away, but they can also be between a major second, major minor third, or even larger intervals. Some tenor and bass trombones have a trigger attachment, which enables trills to sound in the same partial, so it can be easier to play, but it's not usually ideal for it. On an E natural, like in the examples, that would sound like this. More often, trills on tenor trombone are accomplished via rapid movement between partials in the same position. This is what a lip trill on the same note sounds like. The evocatively named valve rip is commonly used in jazz music as an aggressive movement from one note to another, especially low to high. In this example from Bernstein's Elegy, which is heavily influenced by jazz, a valve rip isn't specifically notated, but the valve or trigger is used to enable more partials to be hit in the transition from low to high note, as such. Finally, a turn is another common ornament, again often used in jazz. It can be accomplished on any instrument by simply playing notes above and below the written note. Turns don't always have a clearly specified rhythm or written out notes, but Rava indicated exactly what he intended for these turns. He indicates Spielvorschlag before the passage, meaning play suggestion in German. This is what that type of turn would sound like. Given a brief overview of the various extended techniques present in these next two pieces, I look forward to sharing them with you in context. Uh, please help yourself to cookies and water Thanks for all, thank you all for attending tonight. It means a lot to see you all here. And I hope you enjoy these next two pieces of my recital, Enrique Crespo's Improvisation Number One for Trombone and Full Barabas.